I just wanted to give you a quick synopsis of uh, really what's this church all about? Where did it come from? Um, uh, it really begins with my mother, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm the youngest of nine. Uh, you'll see her sitting up on the front row uh, there. Um, uh, she tends to sleep through the services, but that's okay. Um, when, when she uh, gave birth to nine children, I am the youngest of nine, and I tell everyone it took nine tries to get it right. And so, uh, of course, there are eight others who hate it when I say that, but that's okay. You remember what Joseph did to his brothers? He threw them into jail, so they better watch it. God may put me in that position, but um, my mom is really a unique person, and I'm sure we all feel that about our mothers, um, but she has, uh, she has, um, she's the wife of my dad, uh, Colonel Trayers. He was a, a lieutenant colonel, I'm sorry, a full colonel, and um, uh, he passed away in 2009. Um, but uh, they traveled the world together for the military with a bunch of kids. That is why we're in Washington, D.C., is because of his command here. And um, he retired in 1985 uh, and uh, then went to work for the old soldiers in Airmen's Home. Uh, they were both Catholic. That was one of the things that brought them together. They were, it was a blind date. They met on a blind date down in Alexandria, uh, another another. Um, lieutenant, uh, second lieutenant. He was fresh out of um, school. Uh, he was a graduate of uh, West Point. Had been to Korea. He went directly from West Point into Korea and from Korea came back here and uh, was in D.C. area. My mom was from Pennsylvania, just from the hills of Pennsylvania. Good Pennsylvania girl and um, raised on a farm, animals, horses, all that kind of stuff. And they met and it was a blind date and I'm not sure what it was, but they hooked up and uh, uh, then they ended up traveling the world together and having all these kids, some in Germany, some in Kansas, some in, I was the only one born here in D.C. And um, so that's why I'm in Washington, D.C. is because of my father's military background. My mother has lived where she's lived for 50 years on her piece of property. So Fairfax County is my hometown. I was born at Fort Belvoir Hospital just up the road here and obviously was raised as an Army brat. Um, I graduated from high school in 1985. I went to a private Christian school here in town. I went to public school through sixth grade, and then um, I ended up in a private Christian school. My mother got born again when she was 40, and uh, so I was six years old when she got born again, and it changed our lives. Um, because of their Catholic background, they were very faithful to the church, the church, the, the Catholic church. My mom taught CCD, which we would call Sunday school. Um, and uh, when we'd go into church, there were 11 of us. We'd go into church, we'd fill a pew from one side to the other. And uh, you could tell how obedient we were by how far we sat away from dad. So the furthest away was the best one, and the one next to dad was the one he had to slap all the time. <laughs> and uh, of course, I was the youngest, so I sat next to mom. And uh, so, um, you know, it was interesting growing up in that type of environment, and then my mother getting born again turned the home upside down spiritually, because when she got born again, she got born again. She got, she got all three baptisms. She got baptized in Christ, baptism in water, and baptized in the Spirit. And she hooked up with the Word of Faith movement, which was very popular in the 70s, um, which was a growing movement. And um, in, in hooking up with the Word of Faith movement, you've probably heard names like Kenneth Copeland, um, Fred Price, um, Creflo Dollar. Uh, these are all people, um, and all those guys that run with them, you know, um, Kenneth E. Hagan. So it really turned our world upside down to go from being a good Catholic family, military good Catholic family that went to church on Sunday and that was it, to becoming a family where my mother was just head over heels in love with Jesus and going to church everywhere and meetings everywhere and in houses. And of course, me being the youngest, I got the most exposure to that because she would take me everywhere with her. And uh, you can see the outcome of when your mother takes you here, there, and everywhere when it comes to God. Um, I graduated from that Christian school in 1985, and then I left Virginia for 12 years. And uh, when I left, I actually ended up on the road with a Christian rock and roll band and um, connected through that Christian school that I was going to. I ended up traveling with a Christian rock and roll band through traveling with that Christian rock and roll band. It wasn't because I could play an instrument or sing, which I can barely play the radio. Uh, it was because uh, it was just a God connection, and I knew something about lighting 
when you come in and you see our stage with all the moving lights and the fog and all of that, that's really some of my background as far as uh, traveling and doing stage production. So that's kind of, you know, why we have some of that. I realize it's popular in church today, but part of it is my actual background. And so, um, you know, it's something that we try to incorporate into what we do. And uh, through that, some of you that have been born again for a while would know I ended up with a contemporary Christian artist from that rock and roll group uh, named Carmen. Does anybody remember Carmen? Um, But I ended up traveling with him for a while, uh, which was a very big Christian scene um, at the time. And so I was with them. I was out on the road for two years, and then I came back home. And when I came back home, it was for a short stint because I felt like I was supposed to go to Bible school. So I left um, the band, and I came home for just a, about a month and a half, and I ended up going out to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and going to Rama Bible Training Center, which is a school that was overseen at that time by Kenneth E. Hagan. And um, so you might be familiar with the Hagan ministry. So I went to school there, and it was there that I met my wife, Stephanie. And uh, I think there's a picture of when we met. And uh, so... Um, Look at that hair she's got going on. <laughs> is that 80s or what, man? That is, that is so 80s. And just looking at it, I think she's cute. I love that hair. I mean, you know. Yeah. What about my hair? My hair, you know, my hair didn't change from that time until I started pastoring Summit Church. It stayed the same, <laughs> and then Summit Church, I changed my hair. So anyhow, um, we met there at Rama, and we ended up getting married, and uh, we... She was in her second year. She graduated a year ahead of me, and uh, we got married between my first and second year. It was only a two-year Bible college at that time, and um, when we graduated, I just felt like the Lord said to me, we both were called to ministry. I felt that I was going going to be a youth evangelist. My wife had missions. She really had Russia on her heart. We're not sure why, because she doesn't like the cold, but um, (laughs) so we ended up becoming pastors. You know, you think you know what God has for you, and you follow that path, and around here we just believe God can't steer a parked car, and that if you'll roll in the direction that you think you're supposed to go, God can make you U-turn, God can tell you to turn left and right, and so we just did what we felt when we went to school. So I graduated out of evangelism, she graduated out of missions, we ended up moving back to Lakeland, Florida, which is her hometown. She came out of a great church called Family Worship Center, which was what this church used to be named for 17 plus years. And um, I spent eight years there working for her pastor. His name is Reggie Scarborough. And uh, so this is uh, my pastor and his wife, Pastor Reggie and B. Scarborough. They are also Rama graduates. And um, it was a life-changing experience for me because I had never really been in a, a church setting like that. Uh, I had always grown up from house to house, like the book of Acts. That's what my mom, she, it was the charismatic move. Uh, it wasn't about church or buildings. It was just about gathering. And uh, that's how I was raised. And so when I graduated Rama and went to work for Pastor Reggie, at that time the church was probably about 1,400 people and growing. And uh, today it's over 7,000 members. And it's an international global church. Um, they're, they're just really changing the face of that region. And uh, just a beautiful, beautiful opportunity for me to be a part of that growing. And, and Pastor Reggie was an entrepreneur. He, was, uh, he owned uh, piano and organ stores. That's what he did. He was a musician, a masterful organist. I mean, um, if you ever went to a tent meeting and enjoyed any tent meeting music, he could slam out some serious tent meeting music, you know, uh, and uh, But that's what he did is he sold pianos and organs in the mall. Whenever you'd go in the mall and you'd see the guy out playing, the, remember they used to play the organs and the pianos to demonstrate them. He had three stores in three different malls in the, in the city, county he was in. And he left all of that, sold his businesses. He had a home, a five-bedroom, 5,000-square-foot home on a lake with a boat in the water, two Mercedes in the garage paid for. This was in the 80s. And he sold all of that to go into the ministry and has been in the ministry ever since. And uh, just a great, great influence in my life. So I'm thankful for that. Of course, that was, that was Stephanie's pastor, and that's how I got to know Pastor Reggie. So um, I, I say this about the, you know, the transition from Family Worship Center to Summit. I spent 17 and a half years laying a foundation, and Family Worship Center has not been 
relegated or thrown out. Family Worship Center has been hung up in the chronicles of the history of those years bringing me to where I am today and will always be a part of this history of this church, and I'm thankful for those years. But uh, we, we came to realize that we're in the Washington, D.C. area, and something that was important to me is that people didn't try to guess what the word center meant. And for a long time, people would say, family worship center, what is that? You know, what's a family worship center? What is a center? And they would always connect it with some type of uh, social gathering or, or a, a club for a boys club or a girls club or something like that center. And so we really wanted the name church connected to our name. And so that was where family worship center evolved to Summit Church. We chose the word summit because uh, the, the, the terminology of summit, the definition means a highest point of any local place. You can't go any higher than the summit, and it's not that we think we're the highest church, we just know where the higher ground is, and so we're pointing people to the summit. Um, and also, we chose the name Summit because there's not another summit church around here, and we did want a unique name. We could have named it Hope Church, Life Church, Agape Church, Antioch Church, you know, and it would just blend in with every other name on the planet. If we named it Capital Church, uh, National Church, you know, Metro Church, it would blend it in with the region. So we really wanted something that stuck out, and, and we're, we're very happy with the name, and we really feel like the mission of the church now has become more about the people around us rather than the people inside. We were a very strong teaching and revelation church. Um, I really wanted to pour revelation into my people. I really wanted them to know the Word of God and spent a lot of time with a lot of deep subjects and, a long, and longer style meetings and I just found over the years that that is not going to capture the next generation. That the next generation, first of all, they don't have the attention span. <laughs> Second of all, they're always looking at their phones while you're speaking. So you, you've got to have a capitalization of whatever it is you're going to provide for them. Of course, I'm 49. I'll be 49 in one week from today. And so I bridge a gap from a generation up here to a generation down here. Um, you know, someone who turns 40 is between the 80-year-olds and the 1-year-olds right now. And so I understand this generation, the charismatic move, the healing move. I understand all the, the, the fathers of the faith on this side. I was raised under that. But I also understand that this generation has no idea whatsoever we're talking about. And to bring them along, we had to make a change. Um, we want your kids to love church. We want your grandchildren to love church. And church has evolved because our society has evolved. And what is the, what is the world going to look like in five years? I mean, the technology is, is moving so quickly. I mean, you know, Apple will sell you a product knowing they have another one coming right behind it. They've got us in a trap. And so can you imagine the things that we have no idea what's coming? Well, this is going to be our children's inheritance. This is going to be what they're used to. Um, so, uh, we're trying to evolve this church into something that we can attract a younger generation while honoring where we've come from. And that has been quite a journey, and that's where we really are today. Um, my wife's standing at the back of the room, and so, uh, you know, my bride from, my bride from, from Lakeland, or from, from uh, Rama and brought me to Lakeland, and um, when, I, when we left Rama after Bible school, the Lord said to me, the door to D.C. is closed. That's what he said to me. This was my hometown. I didn't know really what that meant. And so we didn't know what else to do besides go back to her church. We were graduates of Bible school. The pastor was a graduate of the Bible school. We just went back. And in going back, there was no promise of a job. I was a carpenter by trade. I had done construction work my whole life. And um, at that point, uh, when I went back there, I was hired on by her pastor. And that's where all of my... Traveling with a Christian rock and roll band, being in Bible school, getting really grounded in the Word and teaching and, and, and the, the, the gift in me being somewhat ministered to, then having the experience of eight years of being under this pastor brought me 12 years of being away from home, and then the Lord told me to come back here and start this church. And uh, so uh, I started the church in my mother's garage, and uh, we had about 17 people, and uh, Actually, they were already having meetings before I got here. And uh, when I got here, we had one or two meetings. We went from 17 people down to eight. I ran off, I ran off a few. Um, and uh, so we started with eight, and basically they were all related to me. Um, so 
we started from there, and we built this church out of my mother's home. We spent 14 months in, in my mother's home, and um, my whole goal was to get out. And after 14 months, we actually found this location after months consternation of trying to find a place that we could afford. Um, and we rented our first space here, 5,000 square feet, and that was uh, about 14 years ago. We now have 25,000 square feet. There, there is the, the picture of the inside of my mother's home. That was actually our two-car garage, and I turned it into the church, and that was 1997. So that's where it all started. Do we have another picture after that one? And then this is the, uh, the, the first sanctuary we did here. Um, actually, that back wall, you know where the mezzanine is and the sound booth and all that is? This wall over here, that blue concrete wall, that is where that mezzanine is. So that is the back of the sanctuary now. This is running this way. The sanctuary is running this way now. Um, so that was the first sanctuary. We went from having 40 seats in my mother's home to having 160 seats. And so this was a big, big deal, big step for us. $3,000 a month to lease this space. And I thought, help me, Jesus. Today our lease is $36,000 a month. And so we're more than 10 times the about where we were. And I want you to know, we've always been able to pay our bills around here. Never one time have we not been able to do what God's called us to do, and we've given away literally over uh, a million and a half dollars in the history of this church to missions and to other organizations. Next, what's the next slide? So this was the second remodel in here. You can see the sanctuary is now turned sideways. That wall you see, which is, has the cross on it, is actually where our, the columns are. Those black columns that are in the church, that is where that wall is because the other side of the wall is now the sanctuary you're in now. So this section that's in the center here, that would be where the mezzanine is currently. The doors that you go down, this, they popped right up into the sanctuary, you can see, and there's a wall that runs down there now so that those stairs are, are hidden. What's the next one? That's sat 300 seats. And then this is this current sanctuary. A little different configuration, not quite exactly like that right now because uh, the sound booth is up, it's now down, and we've done some changes there. It's evolving. So... God has just definitely used this place. It's been an amazing journey in this place. And we are believing that this is the year of opportunity and that God has some amazing opportunities for us in the future. And we believe this year that um, I'm believing that we're going to be able to, uh, in 2017, 16, 17, that we're going to have our own place, that we're going to move out of this place. Uh, we've given enough money to the owner of this building. And uh, this has been a great blessing for us. God told me, he said to me in a prayer meeting in that little room at my mom's house, he said, there's a place, and I'll, I'll weep, I'm sorry. He said, there's a place with my grace, and in that place, you're going to see the glory of my face. This has been the place with his grace. And man, we have seen the glory. I mean, just those three baptisms today is just so glorious for me. I, I, I weep thinking about what God has done, and so... The face of the ministry has changed. Um, the way that we package the ministry has changed. But our mission is about people. And we want you to join that mission. Um, you know, we, we are, our heart, you know, this began with my mama making a big change from a Catholic woman with nine kids and a colonel as a husband to becoming this born-again radical Christian that has changed every person she's ever come in contact with. And it has affected my life deeply. And so I am a victim to the call of the living God. And I love the fact that I'm a victim to somebody who loves me. And I want to do what He wants me to do. And my wife and I are privileged to pastor this church. And we're privileged that you would come and spend some time in here to find out about the church and learn more about the church.